يعني uh, I'm talking about our experience in this area. We have a lot, a lot of cases which have, we have learned from these cases and we'd like to share these cases with you. Why our experience? Why not my experience? Because I'm not alone. We are a team. I'm working together and we are gaining our experience together. Not only our team as a team. But we are also as a family, and we were young and getting older together. Well, <laughs> okay. And now we have also visitors, fellows, residents, trainees, medical students, and some visitors from outside Jordan, uh, physical therapists, health or clinic. So we are learning from them, and they are learning from us. And this is, I think, a two-way learning process. We, are, we have excellent uh, operative team, and special thanks to them, and I think we really make our life easier and our work easier. So why case-based learning? Because the best thing is to learn from cases, and we have learned from our cases much more than we have learned before. And we share these skills with you, and also to learn from you. And now, before starting, what's the problem? Who has an idea? Who knows this? Stephanie, he has no previous knee trauma, no knee injury, but he has this stiff knee. He's 25 years old, huh? no knee injury but stiff knee. Anyone know about that? What possible cause? Okay, knee cases go more than fasting. The first is to preserve the meniscus because I have seen a lot, a lot, a lot of cases in my clinic uh, which have uh, treated by meniscus and the results are good. And also, in the other way, small signal, many surgery would do surgery. So it is a big problem. So I'll start with the meniscus and I think most of the talk with the meniscus. So before we start, if you have such scenario, a 72 years old, uh, she has multiple osteoporosis, she has pain by MRI, she has a flip torn meniscus, and does not respond to conservative treatment, and you decide to go for surgery or knee arthroscopy. And you see this large radial tear reaching to the capsule, which was not apparent by the MRI, so it was a surprise inside the operation. What would you do? Tell me, what would you do? Repair, do nothing, or why? Seventy-two. Chance. Thank you. And this is what I have done. I will tell you what I have done. So, if you do nothing, so the patient will still complain. If you do a sick to me, as if you do nothing, so the best chance you are in, so do repair. Now, the meniscus is like a shock absorber in the car, so it's very bad for the knee to have no meniscus. And here, the meniscus to work it should have continuity from the root to the root. So, any injury to the root, anterior, posterior, or radial tear in the body dividing the meniscus, it is functionless meniscus. What happens if we have meniscus uh, root tear? Look. It is extruded, it loses its function. So very bad for the patient to have a root tear. And this is very important because uh, the meniscus is functionless meniscus and there would be progressive osteoarthrosis. How we did know? It is very missed and or underestimated by residents, by doctors, by orthopedic surgeons, and even by radiologists. So I think we should have uh, have attention about meniscus. So you can see empty or ghost sign or empty meniscus, no meniscus. You see a gap between the meniscus and the root. Sometimes in that side, you see a cyst under the root or bone marrow edema. So whenever you see bone marrow edema look for a root or meniscal extrusion, and here is extrusion. And you can see it on the axial images you see here. Now, Now, what happens if not treated? Many articles about these, the result, the, the best benefit is from repair, 
if you do many sectors, it's like you do nothing. And the, yes, of course, you don't progress. In this case series, they mentioned that uh, treatment decision is according to the degree of osteoarthrosis. So if you have moderate osteoarthrosis, you can wait to conserve the treatment, and if not, uh, improving totally. But I don't agree with that because they have their own experience, and we have our own experience. And this is an example here. For what happened? Persistent pain, cartilage wear, progressive osteoarthrosis. So the question, if the meniscus root become more extruded, the meniscus and the gap more than 10, we will, will be not able to repair it. So why to wait, even if the patient has moderate osteoarthrosis? Why to wait? Why not to do the same? So in our practice, we don't accept conservative treatment for roots. So, if we have root tear, we do a first to repair as soon as possible, with or without high degree osteotomy, according to the age, degree of osteoarthrosis, and presence of myeloid. This is an example. You see, this is a colleague of us. She has this uh, uh, right knee pain, she has moderate or advanced osteoarthrosis, root tear, and valves. And you see here, you see what we have done for her is osteotomy with root tear. And if you compare, look how the joint was closed and how it's open. So she has dramatic improvement. But if we still say that, okay, it's moderate osteoarthrosis, I think we have to wait conservative, we will lose the chance of root repair and the, she, will, she will be uh, totally replaced. And she said, no, 57. Now, this is another case. This patient has root tear and she has this degree of osteoarthrosis. Now, what's next? We do, she's 48 years, we do uh, long film always, we do uh, assessment including long film, uh, make the angles and see where the mechanical axis, and you see here where the mechanical axis, she has parts. So, we plan for surgery and root repair. Look what happened inside the operation. This is root repair, and we did microfracture. Is the image clear? Because the projector is not. Microfracture. Look what happened. This is after 15 months. Uh, she came for little movement. Look to the joint. It's open. Here. She's very satisfied. And here we pre-op. I think anyone who doesn't have experience with osteotomy and root repair she would say, okay, let's do total this. While she's 48 years. So please root, no conservative treatment for me. Now, if advanced osteoarthrosis, and totally deficient meniscus. So if I have root tear and extruded meniscus, large gap, I cannot repair, there is advanced osteoarthrosis, even, even if the patient is young, I will not go for root uh, for osteotomy. Because in my experience, when I do osteotomy in patient where the meniscus beyond repair, totally deficient, or the root, we cannot repair, the results are not satisfactory. So in these cases, we will go for unicum diet, and uh, this will become provide rapid development. This is one of my patients at two weeks. Look, it's like, as Professor Philippe Lobelhofer uh, said, this is like open medicine, unicum diet. Uh, unicum diet is an excellent option in these cases, even if young, and uh, it preserves the bone and make the uh, revision easier, and uh, most of these patients have some protection like Normal knee disease around in uh, but, but again, there is limitation. There is indication, contraindication. Uh, but unfortunately, nowadays we don't have this in Jordan. It was available for only a few periods of time, and we don't have it anymore, unfortunately. Now, let's see this case. She has knee pain more than one year. She's 51. What to do? She has. Empty meniscus here. You see, the osteoarthrosis is not bad. And this patient complaining for more than one year. And when she came to me, I said, okay, she, you have root tear, I have to do repair. She said, my doctor said, okay, no, I cancel the operation. And then she's complaining, I come back, I want the operation. What I did, long felt to do a uh, high tibial osteotomy or not. The alignment was not bad, you see. The alignment was not bad. So, in these cases, I discuss with the patient. Very important because 
the patient expectation. So either to go for arthroscopic repair with high-angular surgery or because the alignment is not bad, we can go for arthroscopic repair. And if still complaining, we treat you as osteoarthrosis, rejection, physical therapy, etc. And if you are not improving, we can go for high-angular surgery. So after this proper discussion with the patient, she said, okay, I want, don't want the surgery, just do it. Okay. The pair was one, it proved so far, and she agreed totally that if we can circumcise, we can go for right years. So we have to be careful about the patient's expectation. Why? Because will done excellent surgery may be considered as a failure if the patient's expectation is not yes. So this I face it a lot. The patient comes to me, she has also a process, she has been treated by partial administrative and the surgery was excellent. The operation was done in a good way. It was indicated because there were there was a mechanical symptom, etc. But the patient is not satisfied. Sahta al the the osteoarthrosis progress, and she totally knee, and she think that the cause is the arthroscopy. So when you have osteoarthrosis and muscle problem, I think we have to discuss with the patient that the end point treatment for osteoarthrosis is totally new, and this depends according to the progression of observation. So how to do repair? This is what technique I do. I first define the entry point. This is critical, as in shoulder surgery, like when we do one card to tetra cut, I put a needle inside that I can reach the root in good way, and then after that, I put the ACL guide. I don't use the root guide, it's not good. Uh, the ACL guide, then we have modified technique. Sometimes you need an MCL bypassing to have good access. We did modifying of the technique because how many of you have seen metallic debris inside the joint? Metallic debris, remember naming it. So we did modify. What we do always, when we have problem, we solve it. We discuss with the team, so it's our experience, what we should do. So if we have problem, we solve it. So we modify the technique. Because of this metallic debris in ACL or in root repair, we modify the technique. What we do is like this. We put the guide, we progress the wire five millimeter before the articular surface, and then we remove the guide and then bring it. And what we do, we put the filtrant field gilia, so the rubber, we make it just one centimeter, two centimeter wide. Because sometimes, if you are not in the proper place, you may progress to the posterior popliteal fossa, and you don't know how much. So everything is measured. I think this is the best way. Now we clean, go lift the catheter, and go in depth, maybe one centimeter and so on. After that, biology, biology. We do proper uh, refreshment of the bed. You see here? Happen? Yes, cure it. So I like to see blood for healing. So we prepare the footprint, the bed, and after that, we pass the sutures. And we have to click for that, may I wish you in the other slides, because the part may injure the suture. And I won't, don't like to have the injured suture at the end of the, in the, in the repair constant. So what we do, we put it one third, two third, or one third, or uh, one fourth, three fourth, and after passing it, you see, we 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 uh, realign the sutures to be equal to each other. So by the end of the repair, the pipe is away from our repair process. So this is one of the modifications we have done. It's very simple thing, but this I think is good. Now we pass the sutures and shuttle the sutures, take it together with the uh, one inside the root canal. And after that, we pass it here, and look here the repair, yeah? Now, here the repair, you see how it's reduced its place. And after that, we will fix it outside. So this is the outside of you from other surgery. Here, we pass it, and do the fixation, I use notless anchors. And always, I do tensioning under vision, you see here? Under vision because sometimes it's not, it, sometimes uh, when you fix it, it becomes loose. So you have to take care that it's under vision. Now, this is another case, other varieties. What you see, look here, look, look here. This is a radial tear 
away from the roof. So what to do? What to do? Look. Here. Here, a radiant tear. Small size, and then become the meniscus tear. Look here. What do you think? Can we deal with it as a root or side to side repair? It looks more than 10 millimeter from the root. So the shape is almost in trouble. Look, I would like always to repair this as a root because good healing, bone to tissue, not tissue to tissue. But uh, sometimes not. If you if it's away, you cannot. And inside the operation, you see it's away. But look here, look. The posterior part is very close to the root. Look here, very close to the roof, so it's good. Okay, so you have to uh, do proper intraoperative diagnosis. So uh, we remove the stump, and then again the technique, uh, sutures, and root repair. That was very well for you. Okay, but if radial tear more than 10 millimeter, you cannot repair. You should do side to side repair. You should do side to side repair. Don't do meniscus. Now this is a very interesting case. This is uh, a famous photo there. He has significant injury, ACL, with complex here, complex uh, uh, posterior bone, lateral meniscus there. You see it's extruded. The lateral meniscus is extruded. And there is a complex there. You see here, 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 here. Yes, it's empty. So it's later there, and then become the meniscus again. And so it's complex there, and he has significant big tear. I plan to do for him ACL and ALL extra capsule tenodesis and to deal with this meniscus. Now, this is intra -op. This is MRI. This is intra -op. Look, what do you think? It looks healed, yeah? Partially, at least partially healed. Do you think this is functioning meniscus? No, because it's extruded. It's healed in length. So if you leave it, he will have persistent pain and progressive osteoarthritis. What we learned, I have learned, that we deal with it either side to side repair and retention it, and I think this would be very difficult, and failure rate may be high, and the second is to deal, to deal with it as root. So what we did, under the root here, we make a small tunnel, we did refresh it, and repair as a root, and look what happened. It's the tension of the meniscus comes, comes back. You see here, here, look, look to the meniscus now. The tension, and what to do with the stump you can remove, we prefer to do repair, so we may have root healing bone to meniscus and meniscus to meniscus. So the patient, uh, we did continue with A, ACL, and ALL. Now the patient returned to sport after nine months, and now he is in his country football nationality. Now, very interesting case. I don't know what to do if you have faced this problem. Here, the, the meniscus is torn from the root and all over the body. So it is reflected anterior. Look, look here. Torn and the root is apart. So what I have here, repair the root and repair the body. But don't remove the meniscus. Now, radial tear. I see radial tear. Today I have had two cases of radial tear, young. I see more and more radial tear in young people and mostly in the lateral. I don't know why. I think this, this is important for research, coming research. Why in young people they have radial tear in the lateral meniscus? Too much. Okay. This is a case, 17 years. Look. Look, first of all, what I do is to realign, realign the meniscus, like we do in rotator cuff repair. Because you should realign the edges to other, to each other. You see here, it can be reduced. Now refresh, refresh the other side. I will talk, uh, show you how we do, usually we do refreshment. And then after that, we do our modified technique. And this is what we call it the limited capsular bridge technique. Uh, one time I have uh, suffered a snare injury, one of my relatives, I did this repair, and from that time, that time I couldn't sleep and I said, I have to solve this problem. And we find this technique, we invent this technique, okay? 
uh, what we call it the limited capsular bridge defect. I'll show you the next slide how good. Now you see it's a radial tear and we make the knot outside the joint. You see? This is the tear of the radial tear. Okay, now look how nice is the tear. You see? And no knot inside, no knot inside the joint. I'll show you how we do this defect. Near sinovectomy micro fracture, always, always biologically enhanced. Here, another very interesting challenge case because I don't operate in these patients. Never. I don't like to operate on these. When you see intramuscular signal, and this signal does not reach the articular surface, I don't like to operate on these patients and penetrate the articular surface. But the problem with this patient, I've did in all my life two cases, this one of them. The problem with this patient is he doesn't respond to treatment. He's complaining. So I decided to go for uh, arthroscopy. Look here, it's like empty meniscus inside. It's very degenerated. So I went for, you see, here, how the the the, 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 the articular surface is intact. So I went for arthroscopy, and you see, it looks good. There is no tear in the inferior surface, and there is no tear on the upper surface. So the buff, look at this, this. Who has an idea? Hypermobile meniscus, it's empty from this side. So when you move it, it's hypermobile. So what to do? How to do it actually? And which suture to treat? Okay, okay. This is what I have done. Now it's still making, I should have to repair. The challenge is with the refreshment. Don't penetrate the articular surface, except with the limited suturing techniques. And which suture technique? Because here, it's oblique. So if you go oblique, in, out, or cinch, or whatever, or uh, uh, all inside, so this will not work, never, because it is oblique. So the sutures will go through the tear. So we have to be careful because of the weak meniscal tissue, and what I did, intramuscular refreshment by through the outer capsule without penetrating the articular surface, and then after that, I make vertical sutures, vertical sutures, and this is the technique I do, you see, using scorpion, nowadays I'm using glass of more because it's more gentle to the meniscus. Uh, now, Passing the suture, and after that, take the sutures. Then after that, I pass the uh, needle with the PDS, and like the shoulder surgery, pass the suture shortly. Okay, and now shift the needle on the capsular bridge and pass it again. And this is the modified technique, and it's for publication. And now take the other one, and now maybe five years old of my repair technique like this. You see, except posterior, I want the all inside. Uh, except the lateral, sometime if weak, I would like to deal with round lesion. So you see, very nice technique, vertical suture, strong, and uh, uh, not harmful to the softness. So we call it the limited capsule bridge technique, inshallah, for the now this is another case of meniscus, and this is important because this called meniscus, I don't operate on them usually, except if symptomatic, if they have uh, mechanical symptoms and so on. This patient has pain, persistent, not responding to treatment, and he has bulbous metal line. What to do? The repair, you see here the meniscus is, look here, there is transverse tear in the meniscus. Look here, there is transverse tear. So what to do with went for arthroscopy? Treatment after failure of conservative, he has this discoid meniscus. So, reshaping, reshaping, reshaping. After that, look to the transmitted tail. It's very bad, itching the capsule. So, what to do? Again, our technique. But here, because the no uh, intact edge, we do circular stitches, but using the same technique. Though I know there is no substance in there, but I used to. Now, the battery of this operation, right? Now, 
how after that will it proceed? We align with the Prophet. More and more challenges. This is true, true challenge. 48. She's young, like me. And she's really complaining. She's not obese. She has osteoporosis. Almost at once. You see here? Almost. And extruded meniscus. What do you think when you see extruded meniscus? Meniscus root. There's no root. Same time. So this is true challenge. What to do? She's 48. And we know, and we have discussed this slide, when you have root tear or complete radial tear, you have functionless meniscus. And if you extrude it, have extruded meniscus, you have functionless meniscus. So what's the problem? Do you think she will improve on medical treatment and injection? No. Now, 48, would you go for uh, uh, total knee? He said, certain. if I cannot repair or reduce the meniscus, she will not be satisfied. So what to do? We discuss all this with the patient. I always discuss with the patient. Always, always. Always with the the future. Okay. Now, what's next? Don't fail. And she has malalignment. And look how the degree of malalignment. Options? Conservative, unicondylar, total knee surgery. I told her that in her case, maybe unicondylar is most predictable. But we don't have in Jordan, you can, you can go to Dr. Poulan, he will can do it for you outside Jordan. She said, no, <laughs> I want to be treated by you. So I discussed with her that I will go for arthroscopy. If I can reduce the meniscus, I will put it for a surgery. If not, you, you accept the result of the surgery without reducing the meniscus. We went to the site. This is be careful about the patient precipitation because the well done surgical treatment may be considered as a failure if the patient is not failed. Again, I'm saying. So we plan the osteotomy. She needs about 10 millimeters, 9.5 degrees. And this is our plan. It's a little correction. And this look, she has anteromedial osteoarthrosis, which is ideal for the mucosal and bone exposed. What we did, we tried to reduce the meniscus, and we were able to reduce it. So we put sutures here, we advance the sutures, we make the anterior root tunnel, we do microfracture of the bed, and after that, we do microfracture of the uh, exposed bone, and like we do in liberal surgery, short, a little refreshment of the uh, edge, and also some release of the uh, uh, tibial ligament, and we could reduce it. I did the osteotomy, and I went back because I don't do the root before the osteotomy. Because when you do osteotomy, you cut the sutures. So I did the osteotomy and come back uh, to the uh, scope to do repair of the root. And look how it is covered, really covered. What do you think about the result? Then we will cover even the bone lesion. Here, look after five months, look to the joint. Look here. So, the rheumatic, she's very satisfied. You know why? I think if she has pain, she will be Because she knows that this is the best result. But she had no pain. I was surprised. So, alhamdulillah. Okay, now what would you do for this? I think we have discussed with the Kutana. We will go for the pair. I stopped the operation, I talked to her son, his doctor, a model, I said, this is a bad situation. If you do nothing, she will not improve. If you do repair, there is a risk of failure. The head jira, the scalpel, the head jira, 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 the head after four years, she came to my clinic complaining of shoulder pain, and she said, "Look, my knee is good." Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now, very important risk of repair refreshment. Refreshment. Such uh, risk as without refreshment, like putting skin on skin, it will not. Uh, I see videos very poor. Done by some surgeon, very good, no refreshment. So, how would it be? So, what we do, we like to see this. We do refreshment by shaver, refreshment by rasp, all cases, shaver, rasp needed, 
all cases by rocks can we back to the can and even look I make extra portals I don't depend on one portal I do media and far media portal whatever portal you need like shoulder surgery what I needed and go reach the target of the trajectory without harming the cartilage and after that needle you see this needle and I'm not with the needle is definitely you're going to need a little here okay okay and we do from anterior to posterior from outside inside and from inside outside you see these punctures like this so it's important to do all these steps in this case we have alhamdulillah accidentism more than 200 cases we have only three cases here okay now this is the portal this is the needle and you like to see this okay and all cases of meniscus surgery will do it without only all cases because of the deep or the thigh pain, what is this function and so on. So, so we don't use it. Uh, this is a case. Yes, ah, this, is, this is a case. Uh, we have done it recently. We did ACL and the meniscus was very bad. And I put this just to show you how the sutures before thigh might be. How the sutures look like this. And then after that we do the repair. Uh, and we do synovectomy, uh, uh, synovectomy, enhanced by nearby synovectomy and microfracture. Here we did no, no microfracture. Why? Because we did for him ACL and notch plastic, so why to do microfracture? Conclusion for muscular and treatment reserve the muscles. Please reserve the muscles. Don't remove the peripheral muscles. Even if the parabell residual meniscus, and you did much very common scenario that we remove part of the meniscus and repair the other in patients over the ancillary, over the ancillary, and the result is good. And this is this is why we put most of the slide about the meniscus to show you our experience, because the patient who whose meniscus removed, he's still complaining, complaining till the moment. Now take care of root tear and radial tear because they lead to functional meniscus and uh, may take care of the alignment and consider hydrogen osteotomy or distal femoral osteotomy as we have shown you in many cases. Uh, this is to unload the disease compartment and don't forget about the biological enhancements. Good refreshment, nearby semi-rectomy, microfractures and so on. Okay, thank you. And I think we will continue to the second session about the